The Baylands are an area of marsh in between the San Francisco Bay and the hills. They are important because they help prevent floods, filter out pollution, and prevent global warming. The Baylands are home to many different species of birds and mammals, such as the black crown night heron, the salt marsh harvest mouse, and the gray fox. Here, we interviewed Rodrigo Alfaro at the Environmental Volunteers Eco Center at Bixby Park. My name is Rodrigo Alfaro, and I work for the Environmental Volunteers, and we are a hands-on science by nature um, organization. So I help here by doing a lot of our community work and um, facilitating our eco center, which is open to the public. So I grew up here in the Bay Area, um, in the East Bay. So we went to the Baylands fairly often, like the Marsh area, Don Edwards. So it, it was part of growing up for me. Um, and then it was until recently that I came out here to this side of the Bay with Palo Alto Baylands. The Baylands are full of different bird species, like the Forester's Charm, which hovers over shallow water, looking for fish and other small animals. Once it spots one, it dives down into the water and catches it. The snowy egret is a bird that lives in the Baylands. It is often found in shallow water, feeding on small animals, such as crustaceans and fish. Another bird that lives in the Baylands is the black neck stoke, which forages in mud flats for small crustaceans. The Baylands are also home to different types of plants, such as pickleweed, which clumps together and forms large parts of the marsh. Sadly, some of the native plants and animals in the Baylands are threatened by invasive species. Yeah, one of the main problems are invasive creatures, which basically means um, animals or plants that are that aren't originally calling this home. One of the problems here in the Palo Alto Baylands that we come across are plants that might not be um, a part of regular nature, such as mustard, it tends to um, grow wild out here as a result of it being planted or accidentally planted out here. One of the other things that we have a problem here in the Baylands with is also invasive creatures or animals. Um, unfortunately, some people feel like this is a great place to drop off animals, um, to kind of let them roam free. Unfortunately, because this isn't their natural habitat, they tend to eat up more than what's really out there for them, and it takes up a lot of our endangered species that live out here. various plants out here that are native to our area that serve um, as a filter, uh, filtration device for the Baylands. We have um, cordy grass, um, which is very tall grass that's adapted to the salt water. We have pickleweed, um, and we have something called the salty susan. And all of these um, plants suck up and absorb the salt water. They'll absorb the, um, even sometimes some of the chemicals, which sometimes is a good thing and sometimes is a bad thing but they do absorb and they serve as sponges to uh, protect their natural habitat out here. The Baylands soak up greenhouse gases like a sponge which helps stop global warming. The Baylands also filter out pollution and prevent it from getting into the bay and then into the ocean. Even though the Baylands help prevent global warming, they are still threatened by it. The marshes aren't very high above sea level, which means if the sea rises only a few inches, the Baylands would be permanently submerged. If we can't stop global warming, the Baylands will be lost forever. One of the ways that we could help the Baylands recover is actually by doing our part um, and even the simplest things from everything from picking up litter to just preserving um, the Baylands. Um, it really goes a long way when we collectively do this as individuals. Um, it helps preserve um, just the natural habitat for the animals and plants out here. One of the other things I know um, the environment volunteers along with other organizations out here is we also do a lot of weeding. We take out a lot of the plants that are invasive to the area and we try to preserve it as much as possible and allow all the natural plants to take their course and allow them to regrow and redevelop here in the area and basically take back what was originally theirs. One of the ways that we could uh, 
help the endangered, endangered animals here in the Baylands is actually by giving one of the things is giving them space, um, the space that they need. It's not um, jumping into where they're at. It's giving them the ample room that they need to continue to survive and thrive. Um, one thing that tends to harm them is when we have outsiders or even us trying to feed them or trying to quote unquote help them. What we end up doing is actually um, one, hurting their digestive systems and their diets. And two, we're also handicapping them to not be able to sustain themselves naturally. Hopefully, we're, we're going to allow the Baylands to take their course back, um, take their land back. Um, over the last few years here, I'd say about 40 years or so in the Palo Alto Baylands, we've allowed nature to take its course, allowed nature to grow back and take up what was originally um, theirs. So if we stay on course, the Baylands will continue to flourish, they'll continue to blossom, and I believe we have enough things in place to make sure that happens.